Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Renee Robinson. I'm the programmer here at TIFF, and we are on day three of the 2015 industry conference here at TIFF. Thank you for joining us. Um, today is all about marketing. So we're going to be speaking about how to get your film seen by the right people and how to get bums in seats. Um, we also have our Pitch This session that's happening at the end of the day today. And I think that that's going to be a great thrill for some of the producers in the room who want to learn more about pitching and getting your project seen as well. So we have a lot that's going on today. It is day three and I am thrilled to be here. We have with us this morning, speaking about the state of marketing, it's going to be Lorenzo Soria. He's the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. They're that group, they put on this little awards show called the Golden Globes. I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> so he's going to be speaking about how to get your film seen by the people that need to see it. So please help me welcome Lorenzo Soria, president of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. Thank you, Renee. Good morning, everybody. Um, can you hear me well? Okay, so my, my name is Lorenzo Soria. Uh, as you can uh, deduct from, my, uh, from the sound of my name and from my accent, I'm Italian. I was actually born in Argentina and I've been, but I spent most of my more years than anywhere else in Los Angeles where I, where I went to spend a few months about 33 years ago. Um, I'm the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. The Hollywood Foreign Press um, is known as the organization that uh, produces the Golden Globes. Uh, we have been doing that for, uh, we're gonna have our 73rd award on January 10 tune in on NBC on that day. Uh, and when the, when the founders of the organization started in, uh, during the war, it, it was 1943, uh, they, had, uh, you know, they were uh, maybe wiser than uh, we could give them credit for. One was uh, the idea of creating an organization uh, that was looking at foreign markets. <coughs> And uh, the second was, came uh, in the 60s uh, when they decided to combine film and television. Uh, and those were the days when television was like playing in the minor leagues, unlike today, uh, when it's becoming uh, you know, the driving force of the uh, entertainment world. Um, we are known for the uh, Golden Globes, but uh, we do much more than, you know, that is like one day of the year. Uh, throughout the year, uh, we do a lot of uh, other things. Uh, it's called Hollywood Foreign Press Association uh, because we are uh, uh, first and foremost journalists representing uh, about 45 countries from around the world. Um, so as journalists, we organize uh, uh, press conferences and interviews all year round. Uh, we are now running at, at over 400 a year. And as a matter of fact, the delegation of about 35 of us uh, is here in Toronto uh, doing interviews every day for the movies being presented here at the festival. Um, we, as jurors of the Golden Globes, uh, we uh, see a lot of films uh, and we see a lot of uh, uh, TV shows and TV series. Uh, by a lot, I mean hundreds. And on top of that, we also have uh, foreign films. Uh, and every year that it's, you know, it's about 60, 70 foreign films uh, to be added to the ones in English and to uh, the television. Uh, we are lucky enough to uh, derive considerable amounts of money from the broadcast rights from NBC. Uh, and uh, so we, al we have our uh, charitable uh, activities. Uh, in the last 15 years, we have given away over $20 million. Um, we have a, a very active website. Uh, we go to festivals. Uh, so uh, besides the Golden Globes, which is, as I said before, once a year, uh, we are really uh, busy all year round. Um, 
uh, you and I have, uh, you know, we do uh, different jobs. Uh, you guys uh, produce movies, uh, you market movies. Uh, we are somehow on, on, on the receiving end. Uh, we are the ones that uh, you guys use to market your movies through uh, our uh, articles, through our journalistic activity. And, uh, and, and you're the, you know, and, and then, you know, we have this uh, award show that which became over the years, uh, as you know, quite important. Uh, that is also uh, obviously a, a marketing tool uh, that uh, people use. Uh, and um, so this is, uh, you know, we, we are in a, you know, we are in the same world, but at two uh, separate ends. Um, when I first moved um, to Los Angeles, it was 1983. It was a, a very different world. Uh, uh, I, you know, as a journalist, I, I used to, you know, now we we pick our uh, cell phone and and we call every and we call everywhere. We can Skype for free and so on. In those days, to call my paper, I had to go through an, op an, an American operator who had to connect with an Italian operator and do a very expensive collect call. Uh, to send my articles, I had to go downtown Los Angeles to a Western Union office where they will charge over $400 to send to Telex uh, my articles. Uh, so uh, we live in a <coughs> In a, and to search my articles, I had to go to <coughs> a library and uh, and use something that probably some of you never heard called microfiche or microfilms, uh, and and then I will write on my uh, portable typewriter. Uh, we there were almost no franchise movies in those days, uh, and uh, and then. Uh, <coughs> Uh, Italy was called, uh, was one of many uh, territories, as the foreign uh, uh, markets used to be called. Um, and, uh, and almost, you know, like a colony, and the territories really didn't matter much. They were an afterthought. Uh, and uh, the only thing that mattered was the North American uh, box office. Uh, <coughs> and within that, Maybe if you were representing a, a British paper or maybe German, uh, maybe they will pay some attention to you. Uh, but Italy didn't matter. Uh, Russia was still uh, under uh, Brezhnev. Uh, China was at the tail end of the Cultural Revolution. Uh, Mexico was just the poor neighbor to the south. Um, there were uh, no DVDs. There were VCRs that the studios were fighting because they thought they were going to bring the, to the demise of the industry. Um, so again, the only thing that mattered was the North American box office. Uh, today's movies are conceived from the get-go, uh, thinking about foreign markets. Um, you, <coughs> uh, they put, you know, uh, a Korean character and a Chinese character and a German and Italian, just you know, thinking how to tailor the success of your movie uh, to that particular audience. Uh, their uh, locations are uh, uh, being chosen all over uh, for that purpose. Uh, and, uh, and, and the Chinese market from being non-existent, almost non-existent, only six, seven years ago, uh, has exploded and is now just a half of the size of the US market. And the projections indicate that three years from now is going to be higher than that. Uh, we consider a wide release, uh, three, 4,000 uh, theaters in North America, US and Canada. Uh, in China now, a wide release means 40,000, so like, you know, an extra zero. Uh, 
And uh, so as the foreign markets made the, you know, the one billion uh, club more crowded than what it used to be, uh, it's, it's not just an addition, but as you know, there are many movies that uh, did poorly in, uh, in North America and, and were saved uh, by their success uh, in China, uh, in Europe, in South America, and everywhere in the world. Uh, just ask uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, the last Terminator was deemed a failure in the US. Uh, it was the end of his career and then now is close to half a billion dollars, uh, I think 120 alone from China. Uh, Aston Cruise for Mission Impossible. So <coughs> if, uh, if I can give an obvious recommendation is obviously uh, think uh, global. Uh, also think technology. Um, once upon a time, uh, only a few years ago, as I said before, you had only theaters and you had uh, television. And, uh, and television was a, a machine broadcasting a signal from a few uh, networks. Now it's a monitor that distributes uh, cable, video on demand, uh, streaming uh, is... Uh, <coughs> You can download uh, programs and choose to uh, binge watch uh, eight or 10 hours in a row. Uh, some people do not even own a TV set and they choose to have only do everything with their laptops or their iPhones. Uh, so the platforms to, and who knows what's gonna happen in the, in the next few years. Um, the, <coughs> the platforms to show your product have uh, multiplied. Um, and this brings a lot of challenges and a lot of difficulties, but also a lot of opportunities. You need to follow technical developments happening at a lightning speed. Uh, always try to stay up to date. And we see it at the Hollywood Foreign Press uh, when, we come, when it comes to the Golden Globes. <coughs> we have to keep changing rules uh, for what is eligible uh, and what makes a, a TV series or a film eligible. It used to be simple. Uh, you need to show your uh, uh, series uh, uh, six times, uh, you know, at least uh, six episodes, or maybe it was eight, uh, during uh, a solar year. Uh, that now we need to you know, uh, include all the different means of distribution and as we uh, change the rule and we change the bylaw and we spend um, uh, months uh, debating you know, what is the best way to fit the new situation, by the time we sit down and we vote and we pass it, uh, it's already old. Uh, <coughs> so, um, it's, uh, it's important uh, to, you know, to stay updated always with technology and, uh, and not to sit on what you know and where you've been successful, but you know, because things are really changing under your ground without you knowing it. Um, I remember I was uh, president of the association 10 years ago and we had a, a big fight, I remember, uh, with the MPAA that was led by Jack Valente in those days about the screeners. Uh, it turned into a battle of the big guys wanting to crush the independents, uh, the Academy Awards wanting to crush uh, the other uh, uh, smaller awards like ours. Uh, it was a sort of a David against Goliath kind of uh, uh, battle. Uh, we prevailed, the screeners were uh, brought back but now the screeners are slowly disappearing uh, and everything is gonna be um, down, uh, streamed and downloaded. Uh, so just to give you <coughs> an example of how things are changing. Um, we're, and talking about rules, we're also fighting with what is a, a foreign language uh, movie. It used to be tied to a country, was a, 
an Italian movie, a French movie, a Japanese movie. Now we have many situations of movies produced with money from three countries, with a director from another country, locations everywhere. So we live in a always evolving world, and I think the, as I said before, the very first lesson is to, uh, you know, that nothing, whatever you know now and that works today uh, may not work uh, next year or even next month. Um, <coughs> The, and, uh, and just to um, illustrate how complicated it can be um, uh, adapting to this world, we as, as jurors of the Golden Globes were supposed to uh, watch uh, all the uh, TV series and all the TV shows. Uh, and it used to be a simple world with uh, three networks, then they became four. Uh, now we have, uh, you know, dozens uh, coming up uh, every year. Um, and also you used to sit in front of your TV and then you had the screeners. And now they, they are deciding not to send screeners any anymore using the piracy excuse or maybe it's to save money. But the result is that <coughs> In order to, you know, you need to have your password and your setup to watch Amazon Prime and to watch something on Netflix and to watch something on, uh, on uh, uh, the special service that now CBS has and HBO Plus. So we are, uh, we are uh, as, we, as we speak, we are in the process of, of uh, hiring a, an IT person who will go to our members' homes and try to set up their, uh, their TVs and their Apple TVs and their Rokus and, and all of these uh, new technical devices so that people can, uh, you know, so that we can perform our duty as jurors that has become uh, very complicated because of all the platforms uh, that are being uh, brought to the market. So, uh, think technology. Uh, and think that whatever you know today uh, may not be enough to deal in this world uh, in the next few days. Uh, finally, and then I want to leave room for some questions and answers, uh, you have to think awards. Uh, awards are, uh, you know, there are some movies like uh, Furious 7 or Terminator, they don't need awards, and uh, their goal is to make money, and they did it well. Um, but there are some movies, and you know, being here at the Toronto Film Festival is a perfect example, that in order to be recognized, in order to emerge from the crowd, uh, they need festivals, uh, they need the consideration of festivals, and they need, uh, uh, you know, and if on the way they get some awards and some nominations, it's obviously a, a very good uh, marketing tool uh, in the US, uh, in Canada, and all over the world. So, <coughs> if you uh, can say that your movie got uh, two or three uh, Golden Globe nominations, or nominations on, uh, what's the name of the other award? Ah, the, the Academy Awards. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, uh, it's really vital, vital to be recognized and acknowledged. And uh, <coughs> so everybody knows that there is a, a new Star Wars coming up. Everybody knows there is a new Bond uh, coming, but there are many, many movies that uh, need the care uh, of, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, maybe there are some hidden jewels uh, that uh, in order to make it to the market, uh, they will be very much helped by winning awards uh, and to find their niche uh, in, the, in a very crowded market. Uh, how do you, what are you supposed to do to uh, get a nomination or uh, win a Golden Globe? Um, you know, we, in the period between now and 
in January and December 10 when we announced the nominations and, and then the beginning of January when we have the award. Uh, we all become very, very uh, much loved uh, by the industry. We get, uh, you know, over Christmas I receive a lot of dear Lorenzo from people that I hardly met that are very important. Uh, we receive uh, uh, some, you know, lots of uh, t-shirts and baseball caps. Uh, we receive, we are invited to junkets, to parties, to extra parties, to meets and greets, and so on. Uh, there are actually <coughs> so many, and from so many people that uh, is, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't, you know, sometimes you, you come home and, and, and you have all these packages, and you, I, I personally don't even uh, pay attention to who sends what. I think at the end, uh, what really matters in order to have your uh, film being uh, recognized is, uh, you know, and this happens in life is not only when, when you uh, produce a movie or a TV show, but I think it applies to almost every endeavor in life, is to think quality. Is uh, uh, think original, uh, think out of the box, uh, think about uh, things that have not been done before, um, you know, and, and we live in an, in an era of so-called formula movies, uh, which is true, of things that we've seen and we've seen uh, too many times. Uh, but I think at the end, the best possible formula is, as I said before, is uh, quality. And if by pursuing quality, uh, your thing doesn't make it well into the market or doesn't win a Golden Globe, uh, you still will have a satisfaction of having done a good job for yourself. Uh, and now, uh, I leave it open to question and answers, but uh, I have my light, okay, now it's better. Thank you. Uh, good morning, I'm Diana Espinosa from Colombia, um, and I'm a fil filmmaker as well. Uh, I'm also Canadian. Um, my question is for small startup filmmakers uh, to get a visibility. Um, and I know we've talked a lot about, or you mentioned the festivals, for sure, and social media. But in general, is there some sort of, uh, in your personal taste, anything that appeals to you uh, when you are seeing an upcoming filmmaker? I'm sorry, anything that that appeals to you in terms of visibility. You, you mentioned uh, just now um, quality of all mm -hmm. but there are so many of us and, and all of us believe in the project and that the quality is there, but to get visibility, and especially from someone like yourself, is just the festivals or is just social media or? Well, I think here, you know, we, we at the Olive Frame Press is uh, about 90 of us. Uh, and at the end, it boils down to a matter of, of um, personal taste. Uh, we, uh, each of us uh, votes um, on his own, and, and our vote goes to a, a, um, an accounting firm, uh, Ernst & Young. Uh, so we vote in, in secrecy, even if obviously I go to see a movie tonight with some colleagues and at the end, you know, we say I liked it, I didn't like it and so on. So it's, it's, uh, I don't know, I can, I, I think the only way I can answer is, you know, what uh, appeals to me. I cannot talk for the group because then, you know, we are made of individuals and at the end, uh, you know, we have a collective choice which happens, you know, we, we, we don't know about it until they are announced on the day of the, of the awards. Um, so I don't know, I, I can speak for myself, as I said before, I, I, I like to, I don't like to know much about what I'm, what I'm about to see. I don't like to be much informed. I like to be surprised. Uh, I like to see the unexpected. Uh, and, uh, and some uh, critics may 
uh, totally disagree with me, but I go a lot with my guts and what uh, stays with me and what you know moves me, and especially what we all see a lot of movies that you know we may it may be a, a pleasure ride for an hour and a half or two hours, and the moment you see the end, you completely forget about them and 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 that's it. You have movies that stay with you, and uh, you wake up the following day, and you keep thinking about it, and talking about it, and then again, uh, you know, a, a week later, and so on. Those are the movies that appeal to me, but that's again is my own personal view, and some colleagues of mine will totally disagree. So, Thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. Um, I do social media marketing for films and awards shows and things of that nature. My question to you is, you talked a lot about how social media is impacting marketing for films, especially on the awards circuit, but what's the impact been for the individual awards shows? Like, how has social media played into how you market the Golden Globes, engage with viewers during the show, and engage with various filmmakers and audiences? Thank you. Well, the, the, the impact is, is uh, huge. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, and it's one of the forces that uh, have changed the market a lot in the past few years. Uh, the, the studios and the producers, they, they, they know that, uh, you know, the, the going through the, the traditional way of showing the movie uh, two weeks in advance to the uh, critics of the important magazines. Uh, sometimes it works, but sometimes it can backfire. Uh, and, uh, and anyway, uh, people are not relying anymore on what the uh, New York Times and the New Yorker uh, think about the movie. People rely on, on, on what they see on Facebook and, and how their friends react and how and how you create buzz before a movie uh, gets uh, released uh, for months, sometimes for years. Uh, so <coughs> the, the, the arrival of uh, social media has changed uh, dramatically the way uh, movies are being marketed. Uh, and you know, there used to be print and television, and, and that was the marketing people used to do in studios, and now, the, the social media apparatus is much more important, uh, and that's how they build uh, buzz and attention and, and word of mouth uh, around the product about to come out. Shows like the Golden Globes, how <coughs> the Hollywood Foreign Press has begun to sort of engage social media to promote the awards show specifically. How we prom we we are, and then yeah, of course, and then we use it ourselves. <coughs> I'm sorry. We have um, uh, we hire some professionals that uh, you know we use the the uh, Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and so on. We use it to promote the show, so we do it uh, throughout the year and then uh, you know at full steam in the in the month between the nominations and the awards. Uh, we have some uh, members who do the job. We have some professionals who do the job. Uh, we have, uh, during the show itself, uh, in the red carpet, we are actually dealing now in these uh, months with uh, all the companies I just mentioned, like uh, Facebook and Twitter and so on. They all want to be uh, in the red carpet. They all want to uh, use the show to uh, promote themselves and 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 bring uh, you know more viewers to their own networks. Uh, so uh, I you know they we use them they use us and uh, and uh, at the end if you do it well we all benefit from that. I see a hand here and a hand there. If you were a producer with a quality film, what would you do to bring that film to the attention in, of someone like you? Uh, what would you do to bring it into the radar so that somebody like you might become aware of it? 
Um, I will try to be friends with the president of the old, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, uh, well, you know, certainly uh, social media is, uh, is uh, one way, is, a, is an effective and, and, and also cheap uh, way to uh, reach people. Uh, is an example of, of uh, a, a marketing medium uh, where you can do a lot uh, with, uh, without spending uh, too many uh, dollar uh, resources. Um, and then the people think that, you know, the, the people have a misguided impression of, of, uh, of uh, what you need uh, to get uh, the attention from us, from the Golden Globes. Uh, i give you an example. The, the, uh, the other award, uh, the Academy Awards, uh, for uh, foreign films, uh, each country designates uh, a movie, and is, a, is often a, a political choice. Uh, uh, or there are some you know, committees that uh, I do a favor to you one year and then the next year. Uh, for us, all you need is to screen the movie is for the movie to have been released in the country of origin uh, in, in, in a window of uh, 12 months before, uh, and for the movie to be screened uh, to us, uh, members of the association, uh, in Los Angeles, in the period between, I think is uh, uh, January, actually it's November to November of the following year. Um, that's all, uh, you know, to rent a screening room is $500, is $1,000. Uh, that's really all you need to do. Then, if you want to draw attention, then yes, if you have a publicist, if you have uh, 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 somebody uh, helping to promote the movie, that will help. But just by doing that, uh, a movie from uh, uh, Ecuador or Korea, you know, they can say, you know, is a, is a movie that has been participating to the Golden Globes, which becomes automatically a, a, a marketing tool. Uh, then, uh, well, and then, uh, you know, another uh, way, so, yeah, social media and, and just and make sure that your movie is being seen. Find ways for your, you know, that you're not going to go anywhere if people don't see your movie. So that's uh, really the, the, the key uh, obstacle or uh, challenge that you have to go through. And then if your movie is good and it's been seen, then eventually, even if few people attend that, that screening, then word of mouth uh, will take care of that. So we've sort of touched on this idea of a multinational film. And I'm wondering if you can kind of expand on the idea of if we have an Icelandic director and a Polish producer and I Icelandic actors and it's shot in several locations around the world, who gets that ownership of the film when submitting to you? Um, what, how do we decide the country of origin when it's sort of everywhere, if that situation ever comes up? It's, uh, I think I may get some help from Greg here. Greg is our CEO. Uh, Uh, so you, you can have multiple countries of origin and it, it's based on production companies generally who gets the credit for production. But it, it really used to be, you know, the, who won the foreign film and, you know, it used to be the, the French one, the Chilean one, the, the Italian one. Uh, is no longer uh, that situation. Is you know, we, we call the movie by the name of the director or by uh, sometimes uh, there is a big, uh, you know, there is a Robert Redford uh, behind this producer. Uh, so it, it, it is no longer, uh, in, in a matter of a few years, 
uh, is no longer by, nation, by, you know, by the nationality of one single country, which is a very interesting development, and I think is a beautiful development that you know, all these uh, borders are uh, uh, no longer there and that uh, cinema becomes more and more, uh, you know, really an international uh, language uh, that hopefully will uh, unite us not so well. Hi, Lorenzo, thank you for speaking to us. I'm down the front. Uh, there. Hello. <laughs> um, I have t two questions. Uh, firstly, what was the best advice you received in your career? And secondly, um, is there an opportunity to um, publicise the film prior to it being made if, for example, an A-list star or director was attached? And um, wh at, what can we... Because I'm hoping that's what's going to happen with me. And I'm just wondering if, if there's something that Hollywood Foreign Press Association would be interested in once that name would, would come on board before shooting of the film. Uh, I'm sorry, the first question about advice, what did you say? Yeah, what's the best advice you received? The best advice that I could give? Or that you received or that you can give, just generally, generically. Uh, the best advice I receive, I guess, is, um, I don't know, many. Uh, okay, one, one from my mom. When you do something, do it well. <laughs> uh, and, uh, which I don't always uh, follow, but anyway, uh, it stays with me. Uh, as far as uh, yeah, the, your second question was uh, getting in touch with us as your, you know, we're not in the, in, in, in the business of uh, really uh, actively helping uh, 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 producers and filmmakers to make their movies successful. I mean, we are more passive on that. Uh, when a movie is ready, uh, we we sit down and we watch it and we judge it. Uh, sometimes we interview the uh, the filmmakers and the actors, uh, but you know we're not really in the business of telling uh, people as as a as an institution. You know, then maybe you and I become friends and I can uh, sit down with you. And but you know, we we don't do that kind of uh, business of uh, you know. Maybe you misunderstood. Like I meant, are you? Do you promote films in some way? Would you do an article on a film, for example, an upcoming film that's not yet made yet, mm -hmm. but they have some kind of like a, a famous director working on it? So I'm talking about kind of public relations before we, the films. We, oh yeah. Well, okay. Then uh, now I, I leave my 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 hat as uh, as a representative of the association, and I wear the other one as a press guy. Then yes, of course I do uh, uh, articles and, and, and I write stories about films being made and, and I visit uh, sets and, I, and, and, uh, and, and actually uh, those are the most uh, uh, wanted and desired because then when, when a movie is being released, then uh, thanks to internet and the social media, everything is out uh, at the same time. Uh, so that what makes you, what gives more value to my work is to have access uh, before rather than once a movie is being uh, presented and junketed as uh, they say in the industry. Hi, um, thanks for being here today. Um, I'm a festival director myself for a different festival here in, in Toronto and one of the challenges that we have um, with, with it is just making sure that the jury isn't influenced on a personal level by filmmakers because I mean it's such a an integrated environment you know with TIFF and stuff you, people are you know obviously the foreign press would be talking to filmmakers and hobnobbing and different things like that too do you have certain like our festival has certain rules in place about making sure that they're not influenced so to speak by certain filmmakers or people have made the film do you have those same, same kinds of rules and what, like, how do you handle that kind of stuff? Yeah, we have some um, we have some uh, rules. Uh, you know, in the for instance, in the in the month between the nominations uh, and the awards themselves, uh, we there is a zero exposure with anybody being uh, nominated. Uh, 
uh, in the months uh, uh, prior, there is, a, you know, everybody's trying to uh, actually, you know, to do the opposite, you know, trying to put us together. And uh, uh, so we have some rules about, you know, which are the, we don't, we don't go, for instance, to uh, parties or uh, receptions only for us, but we go if they're for the press in general. Uh, uh, the, so we try to, you know, we are aware and mindful of, uh, you know, how important it is to be independent and, and the perception outside uh, uh, of, you know, how we uh, judge uh, each and every movie and production. Uh, <coughs> Then we are all humans, and uh, and we tend to have you know people we really like and people we really dislike, and uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, inevitable. Uh, but uh, uh, you know we we are uh, so we, we we do we are mindful of these, and and we have rules uh, that we are uh, again that are evolving uh, every year because uh, things are changing. But uh, we try to. Uh, keep the two things very separate. Okay, I think we're done. Thank you very much. Thank you.